So we're now going to be talking about photosynthesis, which is chapter 8. And the learning outcomes for section 8.1 are to explain the reaction for photosynthesis and describe the structure of the chloroplast, which is something we saw earlier uh, back in chapter 4. So overviewing of photosynthesis, as you know that uh, life, most life on Earth depends on energy from the sun. And energy enters from the sun and is captured by uh, green plants and other photosynthetic organisms in a process that we call photosynthesis. This is the overall equation. Uh, carbon dioxide reacts with water with the help of sunlight energy to produce organic molecules like glucose. We're also going to get water and oxygen, which is uh, the oxygen that makes up the atmosphere. Uh, these coefficients here in the front are simply there to balance the equation, balance the number and types of atoms on each side of, of the yield sign right here. There are actually two types of photosynthesis. There is, uh, you see the one here listed is oxygenic, uh, which means to generate oxygen. There's also anoxygenic photosynthesis, which means uh, photosynthesis that does not produce uh, oxygen. Uh, there are many prokaryotes that have different uh, types of photosynthesis uh, and their end products do not uh, include oxygen production. We're going to look at one called purple sulfur bacteria in a bit where instead of oxygen they give, uh, they produce sulfur as part of the process. Uh, and then there's oxygenic photosynthesis in these uh, photosynthesizers. Uh, their evolution is responsible for uh, us having oxygen in the atmosphere. They include cyanobacteria, uh, seven groups of algae, including green algae and red algae and brown algae, uh, and all land plants. And land plants, uh, their photosynthesis occurs within chloroplasts. Uh, the same is also true for algae. Algae ha all also have chloroplasts as well. So there are uh, three stages for photosynthesis, two of which are part of what's called the light-dependent reactions, which means uh, reactions that require light. Uh, the first uh, uh, process of the, of the light-dependent reactions includes the stage of capturing energy from sunlight. And then the second part is to make ATP and reduce NADP to NADPH. NADP is going to be a electron carrier, kind of like NADH from um, when we're recovering cell respiration. Uh, if we look over to the right at the diagram here, we have up at the top, we have uh, area or volume of uh, inside the chloroplast. You can see the, the thylakoids in there and the fluid filled spaces around there are, are, are the stroma. And then here is one of the thylakoids right here. You can see it has its phospholipid bilayer. And in the bilayer, you have special uh, complexes of molecules that include uh, substances or pigments that are capable of absorbing sunlight, absorbing the energy from the sunlight. So that energy is going to be absorbed from there uh, during the light reactions. Uh, and that process is going to be producing uh, both ATP and NADPH during the, the light dependent reactions. It's also during this time uh, that oxygen is produced during the light reactions uh, or the light dependent reactions by splitting water uh, from there. Uh, and then the second uh, part called carbon fixation right here uh, or the light independent reactions which means you don't need light uh, or does not require light. Though it can happen in light, we do not require light for this reaction. All we need are the products from earlier, which was ATP and NADPH, we're going to use these uh, compounds here to synthesize or make organic molecules uh, from carbon dioxide. So you can see this process here, the ATP is driving that Calvin cycle. Uh, the NADPH is going to be used to add uh, high energy electrons along with their protons uh, onto carbon dioxide to reduce carbon dioxide to make our organic molecules like glucose. And this process is going to occur in the stroma. So right outside the uh, uh, thylakoids, uh, the light-dependent reactions, the first two, are going to occur on the membranes or 
or along the membranes of the, of the thylakoids. Reviewing the chloroplast from uh, chapter 4, in fact, I brought a uh, more detailed diagram from chapter 4 here. Uh, parts to know include the thylakoid, the thylakoids, which are surrounded by thylakoid membranes. The stacks of thylakoids include the grana, uh, and then grana, which the stacks are going to be connected by membranes called the stroma lamella, and then the stroma, which is the semi-liquid surrounding the thylakoid. So uh, if we zoom in here to our chloroplast, which we find inside of plant cells, you can see uh, up here, this is our plant cell, right up here, and right over here we have our our thylakoids, we've cut into them, and those are the membranes that make up the thylakoids. The chloroplast is an outer inner membrane. The fluid that fills the entire space inside is called the stroma. Here we have a stack of thylakoids called a granum, grana is plural, and this little cross bridges that we see here connecting one granum to another, those are called the stroma lamella. So this is both diagrams uh, showing uh, our uh, showing overall uh, different levels of organization uh, and including the process or the stages of photosynthesis here on the right, uh, which is figure 8.2. Uh, overall, the actual diagram that is in your book for the chapter is figure 8.1 does not actually have the detail labeling on the chloroplast. All of the picture is the same as your chloroplast. It doesn't have all the parts labeled that were mentioned, so we went back to the one from chapter 4 on the prior slide. But you can see the different levels of organization here. So if we go uh, from our chloroplast here, our, there's many, several chloroplasts within our plant cell. And then our plant cell makes up uh, organs like leaves uh, on a plant. And every one of those individual plant cells, you're gonna have these chloroplasts where this process is taking place.